All right, next guest, let's keep this thing rolling. We are three hours strong of streaming. We got two more great sessions coming in. Jesse, I'm bringing you on. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, Nat? Zach, you are three hours deep into a Facebook three Live. Hours, three amazing. hours deep at three and a half in the morning. This is nonstop. I uh, I showed you this. I got my jug here. This is my water wow. jug, dehydrated. It's been a nonstop this, party. This is like old school Jerry Lewis telethon. <laughs> and I don't yeah, know if you can but uh, it sounds about right. Yeah, and I don't know if you can hear, by the way. So I've, I've got a, a guest with me. I've got my two year old across the room for me for a few minutes. This is part of the joys of doing uh, webinars from home during COVID. So uh, my Even my better. wife will be home in a few minutes, and we uh, like logistically we're like, well, just gonna do what we're gonna do, right? So we'll, we'll still drop yeah, some knowledge. That's, that's how it goes, man. I, I appreciate you hopping on with us. Yeah, um, let's do it. You and I, I mean, the way that you kind of came into the Sisu world, I guess, is you and I were, I was in your mastermind, what, a few weeks ago? And yeah. uh, I was invited by by one of the members in your mastermind and uh, you were running great stuff. So I said, I got to have this guy come and talk on. I know. Uh, and, and, on I, and I heard, and I had you guys on because I'm like, okay, let me really dive into Sisu. And I know you've probably had every guest gush about how good you guys are, but like, it truly is the best, like, bolts on to a CRM platform I've ever seen. I mean, it has, the, anyway, we won't, we won't go into that in detail. But yes, that's how we got here was someone came to me that I trusted and said, you've got to look at what they do. And I said, it really is amazing. And then you came and talked to our mastermind. It was rad. And here we are. So I want to talk today. We, you have this, you're actually writing a book on this. So, um, and, and I, I am excited. I'm ex When does the book come out? Uh, as soon as I finished writing it. What was that? As soon as I finish writing it, it's coming out. Okay, cool. So, it's, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm going to say I, probably sometime middle of next year. I, so I'm, I'm working with a co-author now because it's one of these things for leverage. Like I've been working on it like little by little in the middle of running a real estate team, building a brokerage. It's like, let's write a book. And it's it's a very slow process. So I said, okay, let's bring in a co-author, not a ghostwriter, an actual co-author. We can collaborate yeah. and get this thing done faster. But it's on a topic that I'm I'm really passionate about, that I love. And it's, it's called friend working. Yep. Yep, and I, I hadn't heard that term before. Um, Probably because I made I'm it assuming up. It's, yeah, something something around networking, but different, right? Maybe you could elaborate a little bit for us. Yeah, so, so I, I think you haven't heard friend working because I'm pretty sure I made it up. We're sitting around a table at lunch at a, uh, at a like a real estate mastermind event with a bunch of my, you know, nerdy real estate friends. I'm pretty nerdy in the real estate world. And uh, we were like, okay, I'm doing this thing and this thing. I want to smush these things together. What do you call this? And someone was like, friend working. I'm pretty sure it was actually my friend, uh, Sarah Cruz out of Houston, who uh, runs okay. a, a team there. I think Sarah's the one who, call, who coined the term friend working. So I always described in my world, I've, I've generated a lot of business, like literally millions of dollars in commissions through the people I've known, the people I've met. And most people call that networking. The problem with networking is when you go networking, people feel that energy and they it just, it feels wrong. It, it just, it's just, yeah. yeah, you're looking through them to a goal. Like they're, you're only there because you're trying to get business out of it. And there's a number of books on this topic, like the go givers one. There's all these books that are around just making friends, but no one really had written a book kind of the same way that I approached life, which is I just go out to make friends. I literally, when I, I used to do a lot in the bank owned home space before that, there were some other accounts, but it was really all about in business to business sales or business to consumer. I, I don't call them my clients. I call them my friends. Yeah. And so I, I'm breaking down the system of exactly what I do to create uh, friendships that turn into business. So they really are clients, but they really are more about, uh, you know, making relationships there. So friend working, I mean, are you talking, you're just going to whatever type of event and you're meeting people and that, and you're actually building business off of that. I mean, what does that look like? So I'm uh, sorry, I muted myself out. My two-year-old is now in yeah. childcare. So with, with by childcare, I mean like with with mom, which is like the best child. Right? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Dad, dad, we all totally understand. You're totally all right, fine. So now, now you got my full attention. So my, my, I was like, what's going on? All right. So friend working is about uh, stop networking and start friend working. So it's it's not just about going to make friends. I still have an agenda. I still know where I'm going. But in the moment, it's all about just truly connecting deeply. And I pulled part of it out of uh, another book called The Like Switch. Have you ever read The Like Switch? I haven't, no. So The Like Switch is fantastic. And there's one part of The Like Switch that I took and then kind of ran with it. So I give full credit to the author of The Like Switch. It was a guy who used to uh, he used to recruit spies for the FBI. Thank you. He'd go to people from foreign countries and say, hey, would you maybe want to collect intelligence against your home country and spy for America? 
So what's that tell you about this guy? He's got a really good skill set in creating rapport, making connections, bonding. And then he reverse engineered himself to explain how he did what he did. He actually taught classes to future FBI uh, you know, agents. And so he breaks it down in the book. And I, it was a lot of things that I do naturally, but I never thought of explaining it in this context. And once I read it, I'm like, oh, that's that makes sense. I actually do these things, but I could never train someone else. So like on a scale of one to 10, I mean, I know you a little bit at this point, but I'm getting to know you more. With one being you're a total like, I can't talk to anybody. 10 being like, I talk to anyone. How would you how would you rank yourself? Oh, I I probably you're talking to me. I probably sit in there seven or an eight. Okay. I'm I'm a little I'm 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 not like super outgoing, but I'm <laughs> I'm in there. <laughs> you're not and you might not be super outgoing, but you know how to ask questions and put people at ease. Like you just have a very yeah. natural sense to you, right? I would say you're totally at least a seven or eight. You're probably being harsh on yourself. You're probably even higher. Yeah. And and so the like switch this book. It won't take someone from a one and make them a 10 in terms of being able to talk to anyone, but it can take someone who's like a two and make them a five or a six. If you're a seven or eight, it'll make you a 10 because it gives you step-by-step -step how to go make friends with anyone. So then I took that concept and applied it to specifically in a business context, how do you go leverage relationships that turn into to business? So the, the friendship formula is four parts. Um, and if people are watching this, they want to take notes, write this down. It's friendship. And, it, and when he says friendship, it could be love, Right, so if anyone watching this is single, it works to build. <laughs> it, it does. It works to find a significant other. Right, use this for these purposes. <laughs> but it also works in a business standpoint because if you're Wait, looking, I, at I got some friends that are hopeless. I need to get them on here. <laughs> Dude, let's do it. Let's, let's so let's so just break it down. Friendship works like this. Ready? So business friendship, romantic friendship, whatever. Um, friendship equals proximity times duration times intensity times frequency, frequency, proximity, duration, intensity. And I'll break down what each of those are and you'll kind of see how this applies in like in the business world. So proximity is pretty easy. If you're talking to someone and like you and I are on the screen right now, we're, we're, we're fairly close to each other on the screen, but truly we're, I don't even know what city you live in. What city do you live in? Salt Lake. So like, and I'm in San Diego. So truly we're yeah. like thousands of miles apart. So if yeah. I really wanted to forget about COVID because COVID changes all the rules, but if I really wanted to get connected with you and, and dial up our relationship, I'd probably get on a plane and I'd go fly out to visit you. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we were doing all the bank owned home stuff, like I would meet a single contact and I would get 30, 40, 50 homes to sell in a single year from a one person I met. So it was really worthwhile to like build that relationship. And I didn't come into it thinking, I'm going to use this person and get like, just take advantage of them. So I got a bunch of listings. They're like, I just want to make friends. Like these, this person's rad. What can I do? So I would get on a plane. We had some clients in Salt Lake City, some in Dallas, some in, right? And we, multiple times a year, we'd fly to that city to get in close physical proximity. That was pretty straightforward, right? Yep. Next one, let's do frequency. If you and I talked on Zoom or on, we're on StreamYard right now, but same difference, right? If we talked on Zoom once a month, would we get to know each other a little better? Absolutely. And if we talked once a week, would we get to know each other even better? Yep. And if we talked every day, would it really start to feel like, dude, like, like I know this person. Totally. And now here's, here's where you gotta make sure you're not creepy. And Zach, this is not you, this is for your single friends, right? <laughs> if you don't know someone at all, don't go from zero to like a hundred, like don't go from like you don't know them to being their best friend and calling them all the time, it's creepy. You got to yeah. slowly ratchet up or like maybe you follow up once and then another, and then you slow little by little, you get to the point where you're literally like, you're talking every day. Make sense. Definitely. And then you got, then you got, what are you talking about? So that's the intensity portion. If you guy and I got on here right now and I was like, all right, Zach, it's cool hats you got on, dude. But is that a, is that a, what, what type of hat is that? Sisu hat. Oh, it's Sisu hat. That's cool. Who's Sisu? Oh, it's our company. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What was is it? Is it warm in Salt Lake City right now? <laughs> yeah, it's trying to not be. <laughs> uh, anyone watching right now, we probably just lost half our audience. Like they're super bored, yeah, right? Like yeah. it's not a very yeah. intense conversation. Now pretend no one's watching us. Just block out the fact that you're on, you know, Facebook Live for three and a half hours. Like you're just talking to me, you and me. Ready? Yeah. And these are the types of questions I would end up asking people when I'd meet them at like a networking event. You're just talking, you're shooting stuff, and then. I just let the conversation, I get curious and it just naturally goes someplace deeper that ratchets up the intensity. So if we're talking, I'm like, so where'd you grow up, dude? I grew up in Salt Lake. Did you really? So you're born yeah. and raised there? Yep. Is, is that common? Is that a city where like most people are born and raised or a lot of transplants? Um, you know what? I think people tend to get here and stay here. So yeah. uh, it is a little more 
grow up homegrown Salt Lake. That's cool. But what is it, what is it about Salt Lake that like makes people want to stay there? Well, you got mountains 20 minutes that way. You've got lakes down there. I've got some of the best ski resorts in the world that are, you know, just for example, when I was in class, I would get out of class. I'd go 20 minutes, uh, catch a couple rounds snowboarding and then get back to class. Right. It was just really nice. Dude, that's rad. So where's your favorite place to, to do you do board or ski? First of all, board park city. Board. Yeah, where, where, where's your favorite place to board? Park city uh, park resort. City. Actually. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. All right. Pause right there. Anyone watching, did you notice Zach's body language change when he started talking about that? Yeah. If you go back and you, re you rewind this recording, Zach went from normal, like just kind of doing his thing. When he started talking about something he loved, his shoulders relaxed. He got a smile. His tone of voice changed. Everything about you changed. The energy, right? right? And so do you know what, what Oprah Winfrey says? Or maybe it's my, maybe and she always credits my energy. Anyway, they credit, everybody credits someone else for this. The saying is, no one will remember what you said. They'll only remember how you felt. Mm -hmm. So when you ask someone questions about things that matter to them and you really go deep and you get curious, they start talking about things they love and they don't remember at the end of the night, they didn't learn anything about you. They just talked about themselves all night. They feel great. They're like, Jesse's rad or <laughs> whoever you are, right? And they don't know anything about me. This, like I, I, this, I was single, you know, I've been married my wife 10 years, use this for people purposes. But when, back when I was single, same thing works when you're on dates. You just talk to the other person and everyone is talking about themselves. Same thing works in a business situation. It's, it's actually really weird for me to be on StreamYard with you right now, doing all the talking and not having you do the talking because I'm so used to asking questions and letting other people just talk. That's, that's the magic, right? So, so we got frequency, proximity, intensity, and the last one is duration. Anyone who has watched this broadcast for the last three hours straight has a bond and a connection with you that is very different than three hours ago. <laughs> that's interesting to think about. I'm so, dude, I don't know if there's even a single human being that's watched this whole three hours. I hope there is. I hope maybe like your mom is watching and is like, Zach's amazing. I don't know. Maybe you got like the, like the most diehard CSU fan that's just like watched all three hours because there's been some great guests. <laughs> but, if, but if someone, because even if they're watching for the guests, they still got little pieces of Zach as you hosted this thing. And it creates, yeah. there's something called, do you know what the parasympathetic response is? I don't know. Okay. Ready to get all nerdy and MRI brain science? Please, yeah, please do. Okay. When you talk to someone in person, if they did an MRI of your brain and looked at what areas lights up, and then they did an MRI of someone's brain talking to someone on camera or watching someone on camera, their brain lights up in almost the same way. Interesting. You cannot tell the difference between watching a character on TV or talking to them yourself in real life. Like you can, but not at a deep physiological level. So have you ever binged watch a TV show? Oh yeah. Okay, what, what'd you binge watch? Uh, I binge watched. You know what? I just finished The Office actually a few. The weeks Office, ago. Oh, oh, such a good show, dude. Okay. okay, and and comedies are a perfect example of this. So, how many how many seasons did you watch, and over what period of time? I think I finished all of them, and I mean, it was a few. It was at least a few months. But yeah, I, okay, uh, okay, but but you, but you have like consumed nothing other than like every character of The Office when oh, yeah. it was done, or even in the middle. Did you ever feel like you were like legit friends with those people? Oh yeah, you feel like you know him. It's weird, right? Like yeah. if you saw Steve Carell on the street, you'd be like, "Wait, wait I know that guy." Yeah, that's the parasympathetic response. You don't know him at all. You only know a character, and you don't even know his. But like his character is real to you. So like my wife, when she was, I have a two year old and a five year old. My wife, when she was pregnant with my son, so our first child, she binge watched Friends. Mm -hmm. I didn't even. I wasn't even in the room. Like she was just like she had a hard pregnancy, and like like. Dude, she's amazing. And but she spent a lot of time chilling, just like you know, feet up, as she was doctor's ordered, you know, prescribed to. And she watched a lot of friends episodes. I was in the other room. I didn't even watch them myself, but I've watched enough friends episodes in my life to know the characters' voices that I legitimately felt like I was friends with Joey, Rachel, Monica by the time like I was like, dude, I'm hanging out. Like they were my I didn't even watch them. I just listened to them and watched by the corner of my eye. It's our brains are pretty amazing things. Wow. So that's what the French, that's what friend working is about. So friend working is taking that foundation of those four things and dialing it up. If you want to develop a deeper relationship with someone, increase the proximity, increase the duration, increase the uh, intensity of the conversation, increase, increase the, uh, you know, increase any one of these elements or all of them. And when you do that in like a, you can do it in a strategic way or you, a lot of people watching might just do this naturally because it's just what they do because they're connectors. Does this yeah. make sense? 
Totally. So, so question for you, how, how do you teach this to real estate? If, if I want, this is kind of a, feels like a, not a fuzzy thing, but it, it feels like, how do I go and teach this to an agent? Right? It, exactly. Yeah. Like I just did exactly. Like I just did. It starts by awareness. It's how you learn anything in life. Anything about it. Right. How do you learn anything in life? It starts by being aware. So have you ever met a close talker? I haven't. Well, I don't know what that is. A close talker when someone gets in your space bubble and they're like all up in your grill. Yeah, I get that. And you're like, dude, get back. Yep. How do you stop someone? And it's creepy. But if you're trying to teach a salesperson who's a close talker, don't do that. It's getting in your way. It's hurting your business. How do you teach someone about that? Um, They're doing that. They're going to be aware of it, right? Right. It starts with awareness and it's not going to stop them. They just have to know it exists. So, So now that agents have watched this and they know this friendship formula exists, they can start to be aware of How's my proximity, right? Because you want to be a little closer, but too close is too much, right? That's like, and how's my duration? Am I talking to them enough? Like I do a lot of more recruitment these days than I do um, working with clients. I mean, I still run a sales team in San Diego yeah. and we know we sell a decent amount of houses, but I focus more of my day-to-day efforts on recruitment. I just lost a pretty big recruit because I didn't have enough duration or actually didn't have enough frequency. I was talking to him in long conversations, but they were weeks apart. And he ended up joining someone that was a, that he's talked to a lot more often that frankly probably wasn't as qualified and he knew it. And he's like, I think I'm going to get more out of your guys, Jesse. But like, I just, I see this dude all the time and I feel more comfortable. And I said, I'm, I'm excited for you. Congratulations. Like, I legitimately was excited and I'm happy he made a decision and did it hurt? Yes. I was frustrated, right? At the same time, I took ownership that like I caused that problem because I knew looking at this formula, what, what went wrong? I didn't have enough frequency. I just wasn't there enough. I didn't like, I knew cause I was busy and I just didn't, it was like every couple of weeks he's busy. I'll talk to him later. Like, you know, he does 400 sales a year. Right. So it's like, he's busy dude. Sell a lot of houses. And like, you know, it's, it, it happens. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it starts with awareness and then it's practice. It's role play. It's actually testing out these things or in real life. So I do this thing called the, uh, the anti rapport game. You ever heard of that? No, it sounds I, fun. I think I got it from Tom. Like I was in Tom Ferry coaching like circa 2005 or six. So I I think I got it from there. Like very few things that are uniquely my own. I just get ideas and then I like adapt them and twist them and make them new. So I think this came from there, but so rapport means like you're just connecting. The energy is there, right? Like you can feel when you're in rapport, right? The best way to learn rapport is to actually be out of rapport. So you ever heard like the basics of sales, like mirroring and matching, mirror and match everything, like mirror and match, you know, rate of speech, tone of voice, choice of words, diction, inflection, like match everything, body language. Guess what the anti-rapport game is? You do the opposite. So try this. Do you, do you, do you drink coffee at all? I do a little bit here and okay. there. Do you go to Starbucks or like a local coffee place? Uh, no, I actually like cold brew. I don't really love hot coffee. So. Okay. Then, then you ever go to like a drug store? Like where's the place you go? That you can have a short interaction with someone and you'll never see them again. Like 7 Eleven. Perfect. 7 Eleven yeah. is great. Like I always say Starbucks because like you have that 30 second, and I don't even drink coffee, but like yeah. you have that 30 second engagement with a barista and there's like a million Starbucks. So like you'll never see that person again. <laughs> but like you want to go someplace with a really low threshold. That's where you practice. That's why that's why role play is good. Because if you're gonna role play, there's very low barrier for screw it up. It doesn't matter. If people some people don't like role play, they're like, it feels weird. Fine. Go practice with real life human beings. So here's your challenge, Zach. You ready? Right. Next time you go into 7-Eleven, I want you to do the opposite of everything the cashier does. If they talk fast, I want you to talk slow. Right? If they use big words, use small words, or vice versa. And notice how it feels to be out of rapport because that's going to teach you what you need to do when you want to get into rapport with someone. It's almost better to practice the opposite so it becomes gl- – it's easier to figure out when you're doing it wrong than to figure out when you're doing it right. You want to have it like implanted in your brain like this is what it feels like to be out of rapport. So the second that happens when I'm on a sales call, it's like, oh, I know that feeling. That's Correct. what that is. Let's Correct. Correct. And, and in sales cycles, so if you're really talking friend working, it's more longer sales cycles. Like with a lot of real estate agents, it's a pretty quick cycle. You get on the phone, your goal is to book an appointment. It doesn't take yeah. 17 calls to book an appointment. The type of sales I was doing was more long term, right? So it took, it basically took a little more, like it had, I had time to slow down and course correct if I was doing something wrong. Oh, I need to be more in proximity. I need to get on a plane and go there or get on Zoom to trigger that parasympathetic response. Or I need to send them something fun and like ratchet up the intensity, right? I once sent someone, um, 
a guy recently, his uh, favorite band is Pantera. I happen to have played in bands since I was like 14 years old. We connected over music. We're talking real estate stuff, but we connected over music. I, we had an argument over what his favorite Pantera album was, like a fun argument, right? It was like the intensity was like fairly high though, right? Because this is not a normal conversation. This is, he was expecting to talk real estate and we're talking Pantera. If you don't know what that band is, by the way, look them up. It's like heavy metal, super. Anyway, I, I sent him a giant six foot by eight foot flag of the cover of his favorite Pantera album in the mail. <laughs> it happened to match the decor of his wall colors, which were blue. I saw in the zoom background. So it all tied together. Like, do you see what that did from creating a friendship? Yeah. Like it triggered the intensity, it triggered all sorts of things. And it also triggers the, the reciprocal response, right? That psychology of reciprocity. Do you know that one? Yeah. yeah I love the uh, persuasion. You ever read that one? That's a good one. Yeah. Love it. Right. Was that Cialdini? That guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. good. Like, I'm just a nerd when it comes to this stuff. Like I, I truly love it. And someone recently said like, it's, it's studying your craft and I don't do it because I want to manipulate people. I do it because learning keeps it interesting for me. I've been in real estate for 16 years and I just, I never want to stop learning. I always want to learn new ways to communicate and connect because I like people. I don't want to manipulate them. I want to, I want to, I love them. I want to learn about them. And it's just, this gives me a way to connect with more people. Yeah. A manipulation even can, it can be positive too. I mean, in a lot of ways I had, <laughs> So funny story. I had this professor walk into my college class once and say, I am going to teach you how to manipulate people. And it was just like this weird conversation. But in his mind, it was like everything you do is manipulation to an extent. So uh, he had an interesting outlook on that. It was very interesting to hear from him. But huh. I, I mean, I see, I see what's your intention? Is, are your intentions good or not? So. Well, I was just going to say, I see your point. I think most people use the word manipulation in a negative context, That's but it's right. Yeah, but, but he's totally right. I mean, yeah. it, everything's manipulation. Yeah, I took a, a statistics class in college that was all about manipulation. Yeah. You can say anything and, with numbers. Interesting. Except if you use Sisu and then your numbers don't lie. What so was I had, that? I said, unless if you use Sisu and then your numbers don't lie. Yeah, no, of course not. <laughs> so I was perfectly set up. Too bad the internet cut out. I was perfectly set up for that moment, right? That was like the time. Yeah, like, like glitched out on me for a second. But yes, the 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 blessing and the curse of Sisu is that you can't hide from your numbers. So, right. so, so, so what else do you want to go around? I don't know if we got another guest after this or what, where where we're going, but I'm happy to keep. We got, it. we got about five minutes here, Jesse. Um, yeah. I'm game to go on anything. This has been very insightful. Um, I think. You know, maybe I was looking a little more like tactically, how would I go and, and roll this out? And I think you answered that perfectly is I'm just going to make my agents aware of this. I'm going to teach them this so that they're thinking about it. Um, have you seen a pretty good, you know, strong, I mean, I'm assuming you teach this to your team too, right? This type of stuff. Um, pretty big impact. You guys doing a lot of business with Sphere. I'm assuming that's kind of the goal yeah. of a lot of this stuff. Yeah. And, and I learned stuff just every time I'm talking, like I just listened to Veronica who was on before me talking about her director of fun. I'm like, dude, I love that idea. Totally stealing it. Totally stealing director of fun. Right. And I don't know where she got it from. Maybe she made it up. But like when you're talking about connecting with your sphere and doing business there, yeah, it's, you can absolutely teach these things and you can, you can do it at scale. If you're our team leader watching this, you can absolutely do this at scale by having someone in your back office that you can leverage. We used to call ours our director of client experiences, but I like director of fun. Like that's just so much shorter, so much better, right? The DOF. But uh, you can take these friend working concepts and you can take ways to ratchet up the relationship and you can literally have someone outsourced on your team to, to do these things, to think about nice things to do for people. And you're, hopefully you're doing it because you genuinely want to do nice things, but it's also crashing up this connection. So one thing that we, uh, we started doing, and I got this from a friend of mine um, who actually runs a business around this, that they, um, they basically teach agents how to, create private Facebook groups and then run client giveaways to their own sphere and past clients. Interesting. It, it's, and it's, but if you think of it through the formula I just taught you, the friendship formula, it, it, you understand how it's creating because it, they're coming back to that group for a regular basis. They're watching videos of the team leader. So that's, that's creating both the proximity effect of video. It's creating a frequency because they're coming more often because how often do you talk to your past clients or sphere? Like right. this, is, there's ways that you can systematically do this as a team leader. More uses to talk more and not have it be like forced, right? Well, that, that's the whole like buyer for all only, like that's their whole thing with pot buys, right? Which seems so old school, but there's a reason why they work, right? right? There's a reason why pot buys 
and, and these days are, and some of them are kind of cheese ball, but like the concept behind it is you're just, you're getting in front of them. You're increasing your frequency. You are literally showing up in front of them more often. Yeah. Uh, there is a, if you want to teach some tactical things to people, the agents watching this, um, I would teach people in terms of referral generation to understand the psychology behind why referral generation works. And then you can go trigger these feelings in the people around you to actually get more referrals sent to you. So what I mean by that is this, back in the olden days, human beings have evolved and we used to have to know what food we should eat or not eat or else we would die. Let's just take it a simple, simple point, right? Without getting all scientific, but like if you were to eat the red berries and they made you feel happy, great, eat them again. Eat the blueberries, you get super sick, don't eat those again. Uh -huh. So there was this way that we would share tribal knowledge among like voice to voice that is just in hardwired into us that they're like, dude, eat the red ones are delicious. Do not eat the blue ones. Oh, bad, bad news bears. Don't eat those, right? And so ingrained into us is this idea that we want to share what we know and help our, our friends and our peers and our family and loved ones have a good experience and we want them to avoid pain. So if you're able to set yourself up in the mind of the people around you using this formula, right? So you remind them that you're really good at what you do, that you're going to not put any pressure on their friends, that you're going to take care of them. And you create this evidence of success, again, using social media, Facebook Live videos, right? Go Facebook Live. Tell a story. Here's a tactical thing. Tell a story about a client you just helped achieve a goal. Don't use any personal details the client wouldn't want you to share, but you're showing that it's not, you're not bragging about yourself. You're bragging about this client. Or if you're a team leader, brag about one of the agents on your team and what they just did, right? It's going to show to your sphere you're good at what you do, you're trustworthy, you got other clients. And this is going to trigger that. It makes sense. Yep. And then don't eat the blueberries. <laughs> They're bad news bears, dude. <laughs> well, I love it, man. This has been great. Um, give give one last thing, Jesse. Give, give me a, give, give us a couple books. What you, you mentioned like switch, if, if I want to come and, and I just, you know, obviously your book is coming out, but you, you sound, you seem to have a few books that have really inspired a couple of these things and maybe we should be going to check out. So, yeah, good, really good question. So my wife makes fun of me because I always have about six or seven books I'm reading scattered around the house. I never read I never read all of any of them. Like I'm one of these people that I'm just like, I'll flip to a couple chapters and like, I read that one. And there's certain ones I go deep in that I do read the whole thing. There's one I've got right here. It's still on my desk that I read recently. Um, this one. So good. I've read that one. So good, dude. This is not, nothing to do with what we talked about, but it is about grit, tenacity, and like David Goggins can't hurt me. So flipping good. Like, it, I love that book. Um, other books I've read recently. So The Like Switch is the one I've been talking about a lot. Another book I've read recently. Oh, have you listened to uh, Jim Quick's Limitless? I have not, no. All right. That, that's what I would say. Again, this is not about not about necessarily directly sales, but it's all about the science of how we learn. So if, you, if you're someone who likes learning and you want to optimize how you learn, Jim Quick has an amazing podcast okay. called the Quick Brain Podcast. Like I'd love to have him on my podcast sometime, right? We run our, our morning agent power huddle. I'd love to see if I can get Jim to come on one of them at some point. But uh, his book, Limitless, is so, so good, dude. Like it is, it's, yeah, check it out. You'll dig it. It's just about how to optimize your brain, how to learn faster, how to learn better, all that good stuff. I love it. I need that. <laughs> I need it too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, we're, we're rolling into our next session now. So I, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I think it's been great. Uh, some of this content and uh, we'll be seeing you around. Thanks for having me. Zach. This is fun, man. Yep. Well, take care. Thank you. See